Thank you for joining us for this sermon podcast from United Church on the Green, located in New Haven, Connecticut. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are invited and welcome. If you enjoy this podcast and would like to learn more about our open and affirming ministry at United Church on the Green, please visit our website at unitednewhaven.org. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Father's Day to those who are fathers, for all of us who have had fathers, and for mothers who have had to be fathers as well. Welcome to this church. If no one has had a chance to tell you how very glad we are that you are here at the United Church on the Green this morning, we are so very glad you are here today. Welcome to all who have no church home, who need strength and who want to follow Christ, or who have doubt or who do not believe. Welcome to new visitors, and welcome to old friends, and welcome to children and to grandparents, to mothers and to fathers and to single people. And welcome to families of all configurations, to young and to old, to believers and questioners and to questioning believers. Welcome to everyone. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, we are so very glad you are here. Please now rise as we sing our first hymn, and the water is brought forward. Dear God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our Redeemer. Amen. Well, in the passage from 2 Corinthians that was read to you today by Cher from our very tall and high pulpit was about a letter to the Corinthians who are a small church in number, but a very powerful group of people empowered by the Holy Spirit. They are separated now from the pagan community in which they once belonged. But Paul reminds them that they belong to a wider fellowship. It is the fellowship of the universal church. They must not be isolated in their very narrow environment. And Paul is about to come and to visit them again. And he encourages them to put their house in order. He encourages healthy Christian fellowship and harmony among them. 
And as I said a few weeks ago, harmony is like different voices that can sing together, or a variety of instruments in a symphony. Indeed, there can be unity in diversity. Our congregation voted during our annual meeting to pause in our discussion with the Church of the Redeemer. What I see as the no yes but vote challenges us to put our house in order, to heal the divisions, and become once again energized to build up our church. At a later date, hopefully, we can resume the new church discussions with Redeemer. But until then, we have work to do, people. We have pledges and annual giving to pray about and to receive. We need to be able to make our budget in order to be able to move ahead with the ministries that we are called to perform and are empowered by the Holy Spirit to do. We not only that, but we want to invite more young families, children and youth, expand our social justice actions with feet on the ground, so to speak, take the work team reports and sort them out, envision a new congregation here at United, and create an environment of love, an environment of change and acceptance. We can do it. I believe as your pastor standing here and amongst you, I truly believe we can do it. As Jordan so eloquently preached last week, it is a time now of pruning and fertilizing, and repotting, so to speak, and the time of rest from which new life can spring forth. We believe that the phoenix can rise out of the ashes, and that as Christians we are a resurrection people. Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit as a gift, and he gave us the Holy Spirit as a God. It is an astonishing and a strong spirit who will help us to face life unafraid and full of hope. It can fire in us ambition and give us guidance where things are difficult. Dear people, new life has been promised to us. As Matthew says, so what is our church to be about? Church is to be about healing and teaching and proclaiming the good news. And the church is to be about movement, not static, stay at home, preserve our level of comfort, and then let them come to us spirituality, but a bold going out into the world that God loves so passionately, sharing what God has given us with those who have not yet heard the God that is still speaking, or felt the touch of love, the love of God that is still on our hearts, or have not known how to name either one of them. May we teach them how to name. I am working with the experts on a strategic plan moving forward for our church, inviting suggestions for a second worship service geared to Hispanic young residents of New Haven, with Carlos and with Edwin's leadership, we will have a bilingual, Pentecostal, liberal, Protestant, liberal service for those in New Haven who do not have a place to go. The number of young people in our community will come to this, and we will continue to pray. We are going to get moving on our new sound system. Right, Edwin? Yes. Yeah. Right? Right, Stu? Yes. <laughs> right, John Beck? <laughs> We're going to work on getting our new sound system in so people can hear the message that comes from the gospel. We are talking about the possibility of an addition organ so the choir can sing in front of us. We need to be having better marketing and communications, and the list goes on and on. And I want to hear more, and I want to hear more from each and every one of you. But we need to be clear and organized and strategic as we move forward into this new life that is infused by the Holy Spirit. And Paul says in 2 Corinthians, people, get your house in order. 
Thus Paul's message to the church in Corinth can speak to us today. Reconciliation and fellowship are important parts of Paul's work. A unity of believers with each other and with God. God is the source of grace, and God is the source of love, and God is the source of community. God's love extends to humanity in multifaceted ways. Paul tells us to rejoice, and Paul tells us to encourage one another, pointing toward the possibility of reconciliation, both between himself and his readers, and among the Corinthians themselves. It is no small thing that the verse ends with a promise about God of love and peace, followed by a command to enact love and respect through a holy kiss. And finally, a benediction concerning the grace, the love, and communion that God gives us in multiple ways. God makes it possible for the family of faith to affect and embody reconciliation and peace. Dear people, let us acknowledge God's commitment to us and to our accountability to God, to be instruments of grace and of love and community among one another. Forgiveness of the hurts and painful words that were spoken between our members need to be addressed and eventually given. Paul encourages his little church to find a common mind. It's not about everyone agreeing on everything, but about finding the common basis which makes fellowship <coughs> possible. Be at peace follows this appropriately in the context. It cannot mean just be nice and put up with everything. It is something much more authentic. Ultimately, Paul comes to the promise of the presence of God in love and peace. But this too, this too cannot be a formality or just a wish. The presence of the God of love and peace is noted where people face up to things honestly, give their attention to forgiveness and to relationships. Not much of the presence of God is visible when Christians are making themselves gods and engaging in power struggles. Faith is not about shallow niceties which hide deep rivalries and division. It is about belonging together. Our church is our church family. For Paul, that is always more than just a, a local community and more than just himself and his addressees. It is the community created by participation in Christ into whom all are baptized. All the saints, that is, who embrace God's holiness, offered them in Christ, are brothers and they are sisters. This still means a large and inconvenient and often inconvenient bunch of believers. Very imperfect, but belonging together in acknowledging love and acknowledging God's grace. That grace is freely given to all of us. There are people in our repotting and our deep fertilization time. Yes, a time of healing and a time of new growth. We have to put our house in order. And we need everyone on board to do this. We voted. Now it is time to be responsible about the work that is before us. We have work to do. There is no doubt about it. This is our church. Now people have been calling and meeting with me about their legitimate narcissistic injuries and pain. We do need a time of healing and rest. So I ask you, how is it that endings can become beginnings? Indeed, they can. Many of you have been coming as well with new ideas for change and growth and steps to our new life. I encourage you all to continue to let me know about your hurts and your injuries, as well as your dreams and your visions. I'm so proud of you all for not leaving your church, 
but rather recommitting yourselves to what the Spirit can bring at the United Church on the Green. Perfect example of this was on last Tuesday at our deacons meeting and Cher, who's going to be our new moderator, and Catherine, our new head deacon, shared that they were not always on the same page in this latest vote of our congregation. They said to the whole diaconate, we can model for you all how we can work together moving forward in peace and in love because we love our church. I chose for the completion of this reflection a hymn that is called Something About New Growth. In every bulb there is a flower. In every seed there is an apple tree. We will sing of hidden promise and of resurrection. From the past will come the future, and in our doubt there is believing, there is given hope to you and to me. Hope we can continue this reflection downstairs over a cup of coffee or tea, or whatever it is that Nancy and her crew have provided for us. Let us turn to that hymn now. Stay in place and meditate on the words, but let's understand how changed we must in order to move forward and may God's blazing Phoenix spirit resurrect our church again. New growth. The Holy Spirit promises us new growth. Amen.